We are tracking a meteor shower for the weekend forecast. I'm ABC 10 Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods. We've got some showers out there for parts of California, though, so we'll see what our weather conditions are going to look like as well. This is the Aided Aquarian, and it's actually one of the best meteor showers that we see all year coming from the constellation up here near Aquarius. You can see the peak is going to be May 4th through the 6th with a rate of about 10 to 30 meteors per hour, but that's just in North America. The best viewing is actually south of the equator. As far as our meteor shower conditions, Saturday's visibility is going to be on the poorer side. And again, we'll get to that because of an incoming weather system. But Sunday's visibility improves greatly. And it looks like that could be our best day to see a streak in the sky just like this. Now, it's going to be kind of hard to see, especially because in the northern hemisphere, we don't get the best view of this. But this is seen all throughout the world. So you can see in places like Switzerland, a little better view there. But you have to kind of uh, search for those streaks very quickly. Places in Portugal also seeing the meteor shower. And then in Hungary as well, just kind of darting across the nighttime sky. Now, what does work in our favor is the moon phase. We're going to be approaching the new moon, meaning the, meaning the skies are going to be very di dark, very little illumination from a full moon. That happens way deeper into May. So some nice conditions in terms of that. But unfortunately, that incoming weather system for parts of the West Coast are going to uh, shroud at least May 4th's viewing of this. But again, May 5th, it's looking pretty good. So what do you need to do for meteor watching? A couple of things to have on hand. A red flashlight. Red light actually helps preserve your night vision. A hot drink, it's a good way to stay warm and awake. Keep in mind, it can be quite cool, especially in those evening hours. And warm clothes, because of the chilly conditions late at night, want to make sure that you're properly protected and you want to be comfortable as well. So an inclined chair looking up can strain your neck. So a chair can certainly help all four of those items, making the viewing even more spectacular. In terms of the Ada Aquarian, one thing that we like to track is where does this come from in the first place? Well, it's space debris from Halley's Comet or Halley's Comet, depending on how you pronounce it. It's basically just crumbs from that comet and it's ice and dust. Now, every so often we enter into that debris field and as the ice and dust heats up, as it enters Earth's atmosphere, we see those streaks of light going across the sky. It's best viewed, as I mentioned, in the Southern Hemisphere where they could see up to 50 per hour. So a couple of things about Halley's Comet. This is named after Edmund Halley. It's called a periodic comet because it returns to Earth about every 75 years. Last year in 1986, expected to make a return in 2060. We were able to catch up with Dr. Alex Pettit to hear more about the meteor and the comet. Our, our interest in uh, talking to an expert uh, in this realm is that whenever, even though we're meteorologists, as you know, we don't really talk about meteors or anything. It's we so, we so, tend so. to stick to Earth. Uh, but, but the interest is always very high with these types of events. So could you describe what, what will be happening this upcoming weekend? Okay, so um, the the planet as we orbit around um, the sun, um, we sometimes wander into the path of other things. So there's things like comets and asteroids out there, and as they go around the sun themselves, they kind of fall to bits a little bit. You've seen comet tails, right, and like bits coming off asteroids and stuff like that. That debris, the Earth passes through as we go around the sun, and when we pass through the debris field of one of those comets or asteroids that's kind of fallen to bits. All that wonderful stuff falls down on us. And that's what a meteor shower is. It's that debris. We're sort of passing through its tail of junk as it's gone around the sun. And that comes down into our atmosphere. And as it comes down, it heats up. Uh, one of the things over the years that, that I've, I've heard, and maybe you can explain, <clears throat> is that uh, to, the, to our eye, it seems like these objects in space are striking us. But perhaps it might be a difference of maybe us, the Earth, actually, or at least the atmosphere striking these objects. Is that is that true in your... Yeah, in, in a way, you're sort of right. That, that stuff is just in a nice trail 
going away from the sun and we're plowing through it. So it is not so much that it's been directed towards us, but we are passing through it. And as we do so, it kind of rains upon us. Think about rain coming vertically downwards. And if you run through it, it feels like the rain is pointing at you, right? It's not so much you're running into that rain that's going straight down. It just looks like it's coming right at you. And as far as the, the naming of this, can you explain uh, what this is called and why why it's referred to in this way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's kind of a funny name, right? The Eater Aquarids Shower. And Aquarids is, comes from the name of the constellation where we see it. So the constellation Aquarius, the water jug holder, um, it looks like this meteor shower is coming from that constellation. So the way our planet is tilted at that time of year when we pass through the comet's path, the meteor shower looks like it's coming from the water jug of Aquarius, in particular from a star in the water jug called Eta Aquarii. That is the particular star. So from that star, just right in kind of the shoulder of Aquarius, and that meteor shower seems to be emanating from that point. We call it the radiant because the meteor shower radiates in a way from that point. So that's why it gets that name. And a lot of meteor showers have that kind of terminology. They come from the name of the constellation they emanate from. Love it. Um, now, as far as <clears throat> what debris uh, in particular this is, you know, uh, again, from my understanding, uh, it, it appears roughly the same to our eye, the, 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 the effect, the streak across the sky. But can you describe what the actual debris is composed of uh, that <laughs> Earth will be passing through this weekend? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. So it's it's kind of stuff left over from when the solar system was made. Like these comets and asteroids, that's what this stuff comes from. In particular, the debris we're going to pass through comes from a comet called Comet Halley, which you've probably heard of before, right? It's a very famous mm -hmm. comet. And that is full of stuff like carbon, silicon, dirty ices, we often call it, like a bit of water in there, carbon-based stuff, a bit of iron, a bit of magnesium, all kind of the building blocks of the Earth, really, this stuff that the comet is made of. It's sort of like an archaeological um, eminent of the early solar system. And we're going to pass through that stuff and nothing harmful at all. It's kind of like bits of very prehistoric earth and solar system. Perfect. And um, as far as uh, the best way to view something like this, um, you know, I think sometimes people have this imagination where to see something in space, you might need a telescope or binoculars or something like that. This you know, over the years, these seem to be more uh, of a viewer friendly type of experience uh, uh, in, over the weekend. Like, what do you recommend the best way to see something like this? Mm, so this is you're absolutely right. You don't need a telescope to see something like this. You don't need binoculars. Um, there is a bit of a caveat, though. We don't get the best view. The southern hemisphere gets the best view of this. But if you stay up to the early hours, about 3 a.m., it should be best to see it between three and five. By, by five, the sun is coming up and ruining all of our fun. But from 3 a.m. to about 4 a.m. is about peak. Look to the eastern horizon. That's where Aquarius will rise. And you see it quite clearly. Look east, about 3 or 4 ish. It should start to rise. The annoying thing is, when it gets high enough to be nice, that's when the sun starts coming up. So there's a small window of it being above the horizon and before the sun comes up. It's about an hour or so. Um, but you should still be able to see it. Just look east. If it's a nice, clear sky, you should be able to see some of the streaks coming across from that meteor shower. And my final question is, um, usually uh, somewhere when we're learning more about these particular meteor showers, you know, they're all lo a little bit different for timing and viewing and and uh, and the debris field, but there's always the rate that's included in that. Do you know anything mm -hmm. about the rate and what that might roughly mean? Because it's it seems like it might be kind of high. Yeah, so the Aquarids is a little bit higher than average. We get a few high doses up here in the Northern Hemisphere. The Perseids, for example, in August is quite high. And the Geminids, which are much later in the year, are quite high. And the Aquarius is one of the best ones to see this time of year in um, anything before fall. It's still not huge. You'll expect to see maybe 10, if you're really lucky, 20 streaks an hour. So if you had a full view of it and you didn't blink, you might see 20 of these. Maybe, as I said, a much better view from the Southern Hemisphere, but it's still really good. It's the best one you'll see this side of um, fall, really. So that's what the rate means, like how many of those streaks you'll see. In particular, oh. this one is really good because it has the longest streaks. That's what makes this one kind of famous. It has very long, very fast streaks. All right. Well, I thank you so much for your time. You've got everything above Earth covered, uh, describing it and studying it and explaining <laughs> it to us. And we will do our best job here to explain everything going on between our eyeballs and that event because 
Uh, there will Please. be some changes in the next many days. And of course, uh, we'll try and cover that angle of it. So thank you so Please. much for your time. No problem at all. Thank you. Tracking those atmospheric conditions and how our sky coverage will be into our Saturday. We've got a developing weather system way out here in the Pacific. It's going to take some time to get here, but when it does, it's going to drastically change our favorable spring pattern that we've been seeing throughout much of California with highs in the 70s and 80s and clear skies. And during the day on Saturday, you can see how this weather system comes sweeping through, basically giving us a complete washout for the beginning of the weekend and also some colder temperatures. The good thing on this is it's not going to last all the way through our weekend. Saturday snow level will be falling. A lot of difficult travel in the Sierra developing into our Saturday evening in particular where that snow line drops down to about 5,000 feet and you'll see how we'll have some lingering showers mainly just in the morning here on Sunday for this year but much colder weather again if you're headed out want to make sure you dress warm and also have protective gear out there because it is going to be on the chilly side after hitting some highs in the 60s for the foothills also seeing a much cooler weather pattern developing so if you're out to see that meteor shower skies will be clearing but it will be quite cool and then for the coast as well a cool forecast for the weekend rain on saturday not great for viewing that meteor shower but decent on sunday but on the chilly side as we can see on our 10 day forecast as well we have the chance of rain on saturday and then clearing for that sunday forecast should be pretty nice out there as we head out into the end of the weekend but again on the cool side with those overnight lows in the 40s if you want to check out more in-depth forecasts as well as explainers and weather specials be sure to download our abc 10 plus app it's live local always on and also free on Apple TV, Roku, and Fire TV. Hope you check it out. We've got some great series in there as well.